Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new locals feature match. We are in round three for June 10 locals. On the left, we've got the Gold Pride Punk deck and no, it is not me playing the deck. This is another player, Locals Henry, who's been piling the deck for a little bit longer than I have. I was also playing it at this locals and um, they were having a little bit better luck than I was uh, this night with the deck. So had him on the feature. And they are playing against the Sword Soul deck, so we'll see how this one plays out. They do open up Itali though, which is pretty strong. Pretty strong, pretty strong. And uh, so they're going to go ahead and summon the Xiamen, pay 600, and this is going to be pretty much full combo for the Punk cards. And yeah, the reason you play the Punk cards with the Gold Pride cards, because all the Gold Pride monsters say, you know, if your life points are lower than your opponents, you can special summon them from your hand. And they'll have various effects. Captain Carry being one of the best ones, turn one. The other cards, unfortunately, don't really do anything turn one. You more like just slap them on the board and then try to interact with your opponent next turn. So they do fusion for the Rising Carp with the Sharakusa and the Xiamen. Rising Carp effect, no ash there. Uh, ash on Rising Carp is insane. Very, very risky play. Like, one thing, if you if you do play this deck, and one thing I've learned from experience is, like, that is such a fragile line. Like, it has huge payoff because you do get into the rest of your punk cards, like Wagon, uh, your uh, Madam Spider, and your Dragon Drive, especially paired with the field spell that you just got there. Um, you know, you're getting your draw two plus trap search, and you're setting yourself up for your gold pride engine. So it's, like, basically one card off E-Telly gets you draw two plus imperm search into your gold prize up so it's really really good but again it like dies to an ash blossom so it you know it's a bit of give and take so they do quickly remember luckily to activate the uh jam extreme session uh before they synchro which is something you don't want to make the mistake of doing so they're gonna go chain link one dragon drive chain link two deer note and i wonder if they used uh, or no, they couldn't have used Xiamen because they fusioned with that earlier. So just Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2. Um, I guess you could maybe, like, argue that, uh, you could have done the Chainlink the other way to play around, like, Bell, but I think probably playing around Ash probably makes a little bit more sense. And they get to draw Talents off of the Jam Extreme Session, which is huge. And they're gonna add Madam Spider off the Dragon Drive, and they're just gonna use Field Spell, Banish Deer Note, summon the Madam Spider, and that is gonna go ahead and Special Summon... Uh, the Madam Spider, pay 600 to go ahead and search out for the Dangerous Gabu. And they're also on a 48-card list. I was playing a 40-card list, similar to one of the lists at top, uh, I think an Oregon Regional a little while back. But I kind of weigh the, the way their, uh, their list looked, playing a little bit higher card count. Because, like, I love the punk cards in the, uh, the Gold Pride deck. I think they have to be in there. I tried playing Pure Gold Pride. I hated it. That version of the deck is so bad. It's terrible. Literally does nothing. Awful booty buns, butt cheek. Terrible version of the deck. Don't even try it unless the deck gets more support. You just need the punk cards. But the one worst thing about the punk cards is is that they all suck going second. Like drawing Madam Spider, Sharakusai, Wagon, Deer Note. Like all these cards are just so bad going into boards. And sometimes they're just straight up bricks to draw. Like Seeing any one of those cards in your opening hand just kind of screws up that whole line of, uh, you know, Xiamen off Itali. So, like, I think spacing the deck out is nice um, while still keeping some consistency. And they're also playing Fenrir in the deck, too. Allows the deck to make Baron, which actually gives you access to an Omni Negate, which, you know, without that, you really don't have any way to do that. Just a ton of different forms of interaction. And then your only real negate sometimes is Dragite. So they do actually hold Imperm all the way uh, for Chariot Carry. And uh, they do just special summon the Nitro Blaster, set a card, and pass turn. If the Chariot Carry would have gone through there, they would have gotten so much more value out of that whole Xiamen line. But it's crazy what one card got them. It's just unfortunate that they didn't have a uh, any other Gold Pride monsters in hand there to like play through that Imperm. Uh, because it just basically got them draw two. And no Gold Pride stuff. So well-timed Imperm there. I mean, I, I feel like anytime you see gold, like punk stuff right now too, it's fair to assume that it's probably a gold pride deck. So I, you can't go wrong with like holding imperm for something like that. And uh, they do use the nitro blaster to give the opponent a token, which is super unfortunate because they end up being you know on the sword soul deck, so they can just fire off a shoot it in hand, banishing itself, targeting the set to return it to the hand. And there's really no interruptions left on the field at this point, so long as you don't play into the nitro head, uh, which basically can just during the main phase, uh, quick effect. 
pop the token and then everything that is an adjacent monster zone or spell and trap zone to it. So they're going to go ahead and summon out Atara uh, since they control that non-effect monster and they're going to go ahead and synchro with the token um, and the Atara into Chow Funky. And yeah, that's just, I mean, talk about free advantage. Literally free. And Chow Funky has a secret effect that basically makes it an extender. And since they have a water monster on field, that's kind of good. Because that, that means they can, you know, at worst, attack over the chariot carry and summon a water worm monster from the deck, which is Moe, which is kind of insane. And they also have Ecclesia too. So, like, they've just, they've got everything here. Very, very good start to the turn for them. It's crazy what having one little token for them will do. Um, so they're going to go ahead and use Ecclesia, tag out into Taya. I mean, Taya just pretty much going into Boxia just deletes the whole board anyways. Um, they are going to go ahead and banish the Adhara here for the Taya. It'll special them in a token, and they can go Synchro 8 here. And they're going to go into Chishao. Chain link one Chishao, chain link two Taya. Taya is going to go ahead and send a worm. And that's going to dump Ashina. And Chishao here will go ahead and add Longyun. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely a few decks where you don't want to give the opponent a level 8 token. I mean, it can't be linked with, but of course, you can still use it for other things like Synchro Summoning or Fusion Summoning. Um. And yeah, they don't need to to attack into the chariot carry with Chao Fang because they already opened Moe. Their hand is literally stacked. And uh, yeah, so they're going to reveal the long end. They also have Circle in hand too, which is insane. So if they had any other interruption left on field, they could have possibly played through that with the help of the Circle. And on Resolution of Moe, they are just going to use the Ashen here to go ahead and banish itself. And that is going to summon in another Edhara here from the deck. And they can synchro with the Chaofang and the Adhara into a level 10. Or I was going to say they could maybe be going for a, a dang long line here, but that doesn't really make too many sense going uh, second anyways. So they're going to synchro into Changying the hard way. And then they're going to use Adhara's effect to go ahead and add back. And that will trigger Changying. To go ahead and banish a card from the opponent's field and graveyard. So they're going to banish the Nitro Head. And banish the Zeaman out of the grave as well. And they are on 2 Deer Node I know. So like the getting rid of that is kind of impactful. Since like there is a world where Deer Node could bring it back again. If this game does get into a grind game. Which it's definitely not going to the way it's going right now. They'll Synchro into Berserker. And draw a card. And then they're going to use the Long Yun. Pitching the Ashina, and then sickering into probably the Sinister Sovereign here, burning 12. And yeah, no matter how you want to put it, this is going to be game. They have three banished cards, they have three banished cards, everything is losing six. And Chengying is gaining six, so they're just going to go ahead and admit defeat. Uh, yeah, they just literally had every extender in the sun. And having a token on their field definitely didn't help their case either. So we're into game two, and we are going to see the Punk deck go first. They open up double talents. Better luck next time. Chariot carry and one other card. And it's Ziyama. It's a pretty strong card to have here. Also a reminder to check out Imperium Duelist down in the description below. And don't forget to use my discount code Warning Kill Send Off at checkout to save 10% off your entire order and support the channel in the process. Same can be said about my uh, affiliate link to TCG Player. Anytime you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase goes right back in the channel. Helps out a ton. So we're going to see them use Ziyama and pay six. That's going to search the Foxy Tune here. Now, they do still technically have, like, Punk Combo here. Uh, since they did start with Normal Summon Ziaman. And they do have access to the Foxy Tune. And, uh, yeah, there's that Ash on Rising cart. Which is, it goes kind of insane. Uh, but I, I feel like you can imagine that if they're discarding talents off of Foxy Tune, it means they probably have another one, or their hand is just insane. And uh, they are going to go ahead and look at the hand here. So they have Ash, Nibiru, Long Yun, and Vishuda, which is kind of crazy. They've got two hand traps, both of which are very relevant, and Engine. So, like, I mean, the Engine is not that threatening. It's really the non engineing that's very threatening here because I feel like the Gold Pride Engine can deal with the Engine of the Sword Soul deck. Um, 
Especially since he has ch uh, the Captain Carry in hand, which gets trapped, and the trap is really, really strong, especially against Sword Soul. Uh, so I feel like... Ripping the Ash out of the hand here is definitely the correct play because you can play around the Nibiru. They've only summoned three times so far, but they do hit the Nibiru back in the deck, which is very, very questionable. Um, yeah, so they know the rest of the hand is Nibiru or uh, Ash Blossom, a Long Yun, and a Vashuda. And they're going to go ahead and special summon Cherry or a Captain Carry, which they uh, obviously cannot Ash since they've already Ashed this turn. So that'll secure the trap. But the trap is just going to lose out right next turn to the Ash. So I don't know why we didn't rip the Ash out of the hand. That definitely felt like a misplay there. They're going to go ahead and use Better Luck next time. And Better Luck next time is going to go ahead and grab probably Rollerballer here. I don't see why you'd grab Leon. And I mean, I guess there is an argument for getting rid of the Nibiru. Um... Because I guess, like, grabbing the Rollerballer here, being able to put it on field kind of checks the Ash. Because, yeah, sure, you can Ash better luck next time. Uh, or they start your engines, rather, on the Summon of Longyun. But then you're just going to activate Rollerballer to fusion into Pinballer and take both Longyun and Token. And put them on, like, draw exactly, like, Emergence, I guess. But they draw Imperm for turn, which is, like really rough because now the ash just kills the whole play and there's really not a whole lot you can do um yeah and if this isn't during the main phase i can't even chain it in response so yeah that just that's super unfortunate like i feel like there's an argument for both hitting the ash and like the uh the imperm yeah because they're just going to quickly ash the uh the start your engines but i, I feel like start your engines is so much better on its own though because it's getting a pop and then getting you into leon which gets you into another pop and also a draw in the end phase off better luck next time so i feel like there's just no way we're hitting the nibiru back into the deck there yeah i mean i don't know yeah i feel like there's just no way there's no way you're putting nibiru back because you just summon carry grab trap pass I'm sure they draw imprint for turn and then you're just you're i don't know i don't know i don't know because like if if they, even if they draw, like, Taya, because Moe would be, Moe would be, like, one of the better draws, I guess. But I feel like it doesn't beat a pop and, like, a double pop, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but they're going to get the Synchro into Baron. That's going to pop Chariot Carry, swing in uh, for 3k. And they're going to activate E-Telly, and that's going to get uh, negated. And... Oh, they don't, they don't use the, uh, well, they couldn't get any damage indirectly there because there's two monsters on field, but yeah, that top deck e would have been insane, especially since they played two Deer Note, but Baron's there to negate it, and they're just going to have to pass turn, Baron pops better luck next time, swinging directly for 3k, and, uh, they're going to set Imperm, pass turn, and they draw Ash, and that is going to be it, so Gold Pride Punk, unfortunately, losing their 2-0, I think that Talon Strip was definitely a misplay there, but it is what it is. And uh, last but not least, a big shout out goes to our current Divine Level channel members who are Misfit, H8, Cyber, Cadillac, City, Ford, Pony, Sark, and Green. Thank you guys so much as always for your extremely kind and very, very generous support of the channel.